First of all, thank you very much for asking me to work on your room design. This, believe it or not, is your room. Now, I've assumed that the ceiling has already been flattened and uh, a lot of work has gone into this and I'll step you through it slowly, but I'll give you a bit of a look around. Um, first of all, if we look at the front wall here, we can see that uh, what I've done is I've removed the right hand wall so that we can see what we're doing. In here we have your left and right BMW speakers uh, and your centre speaker and your cabinet, all accurate to dimensions. Now because we have to have them in the corner and close to the wall, the sound from those actually gets impacted greatly. So we need to put some absorption panels here um, to the rear and to the side of the speakers and that's what you're looking at here. The screen is as large as we can make it. Uh, and here is the calculator that we've used to arrive at that. Your screen size therefore is 2.93 meters by 1.54 meters and the front of the projector, the lens is at 5 meter distance from your screen that gives us a light output of 55 nits. If we make the screen any bigger you can see this moves forward effectively and we start to run out of decent light on the screen so we're, we're quite close to the front there. Uh, if you decide you want a bigger screen we can certainly address that and we can probably get a few more sort of centimeters out of it but this seems ideal and it seems to fit the room quite nicely and given that you said you'd like to sit at the back of the cinema this might be a better option for you anyway. I've chosen at the moment a 16 by 9 screen that means that your anamorphic videos the ones with the black barbs will be in the middle we can go to a slimmer screen vertically uh, and we can discuss those options but I think for your room this is actually uh, a better option. Now what I've done in the room to improve things and I'll go through the calculators in a minute is I've added some absorption material to the ceiling and these are heavy uh, acoustic velour drapes which I'm recommending you put on the left and right side of the room obviously you can't see the ones on this side I'm just going to spin the room around a bit. All right. Now, <clears throat> there's some fairly clever things that have happened in this room. First of all, at the back here, we have some diffusers. These are called Skyline diffusers or DC2s, and they diffuse the sound and bounce it around the room. The reason they're used is because they create a diffuse rear surround field, which makes things sound much more realistic. Um, so your surround field will be really, really nice. Um, you can see more acoustic absorption panels here at the rear and also on the side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove uh, those panels. Uh, wrong ones. Uh, where is it? There we go. And what I've done is I've actually hidden inside those panels in an area where there isn't absorption your uh, left, right and rear surround speakers and these have all been calculated out. In a minute I'll take you through and show you how the, the positions are calculated in line with Dolby specifications. But the beauty of these is that they're, they're not obvious in the room and so the rest of the panels make uh, for very nice acoustics in the room and, and they hide the um, uh, the speakers nicely. So the room looks very very um, smooth, professional and very warm and inviting and it doesn't feel like you've got you've got speakers everywhere. Um, one of the challenges in your room and I'll, uh, I'll refer to this a bit later is um, that you have um, an issue with the uh, bass response in the room and it's taken a long time to calculate that out and it hasn't worked um, it hasn't been easy because uh, your room has some interesting characteristics. Um, now, I know that you might be surprised by this. I'm not sure if I mentioned it when we were talking, but the optimum in a room is four subwoofers. And the reason for that is not for power. We're not trying to blow, you know, your, your um, theatre room or listening room in, into the next century. What we're trying to do is make the, the bass incredibly smooth and even in the room. And this is because of the highs and lows or, or the, the nodes that are created throughout the room. And your room was incredibly uneven. Even sort of building it sort of to the best specifications, we ended up with big peaks and dips all over the place. So the room would have sounded incredibly boomy. So I spent a long time calculating the position of the subwoofer. 
And here's the calculator that we use to work out you know, how your subwoofers and your base is working in your room. Now ideally we're looking for a nice smooth line across here all the way up to the 80 hertz mark. Um, this is 80 hertz here, so it's relatively smooth to here and all the way here. It doesn't matter that it tails off a little bit, but we've got a bump here, but we can remove that with equalization when the room is put together. But this gives you incredible bass. Why is that important? Well, if you're listening to, for example, a cello or orchestral piece or anything with instruments or sounds in the lower registers, if your bass isn't right, it just sounds like a boom. It's just one distinct note, and, and it's a bit like the car that pulls up next to you going doof, 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 doof. What you'll have here is incredible detail in your sound. You'll hear every note, every tone, and uh, every component of the music or the sound that you're listening to. It makes an incredible difference to the room. So this is how we've arrived at it. Um, in here you can see the, your seating position and the plus and minus the left and right seating positions on the, uh, on the, the plan and the uh, subwoofer positions as I move them around that graph changes and it took several hours to calculate out the very best sound in your room. So that's how we get that and we'll get back to uh, the rest of the video now. And so what we've got here is there's one uh, by the window here, there's one on the far right corner of the room, and there's one just either side of the lounge. Now in terms of the gym equipment, I've allowed enough room to put perhaps a running machine behind the back here, and for your uh, gym to sit where it is in the corner. The interesting thing is that um, the seating position has also been calculated to guess, give the best viewing angle, and also for the best sound in the room. And uh, as we talked about, you mentioned that you were gonna get a thick rug, so I've assumed that the tiles are remaining, and that's one of the reasons that we desperately need acoustic treatment on the ceiling, because we've got this hard surface on the floor here. And so we need this nice thick rug, as thick as possible, um, to absorb as much sound as we can, and these curtains on the left and right side. So I'm just going to make some quick changes to the room. I'm going to uh, put these uh, the right hand wall and um, the, let's see, I'll put the right hand curtains back and the right hand absorbers. And then I'm going to remove the ceiling and I'm going to remove the uh, acoustic panels on the ceiling. And now we're going to turn the room around and have a look from the top. Okay, so let's have a look at how we actually calculate the, uh, the speaker positions. So we've got some challenges in your room. You've got the corner here and you've got the window here. Um, so I had to find somewhere to get your left and right surround speakers and they fit in from 90 to 60 degrees on this angle here and I've managed to get them into that specification. You'll notice your front speakers are also, actually I've got to move this one a little bit, uh, are well within the specification range. And your screen, I would like it to be a little bit wider, but with the distance of your projector um, and the, um, uh, <laughs> I've forgotten the word, um, the, the ratio, the screen ratio of the projector, um, it's making it difficult, plus we have to fit everything else in as well. So that's about as big as we can go at this point in time. We could stretch it a little bit and we can certainly discuss that. The other thing that um, we've calculated out here are the Atmos speakers, and um, they sit in line with, um, this is the 10 degree off vertical or for a single set. Now. This is where these two lines here are where you would have twin Atmos speakers, but your room doesn't sort of work super well for that because this wall is way out uh, behind you. So I think in honesty, um, a, a single row of Atmos speakers there are going to be the best option. Okay. Um, there are ways we can do it. We could put some speakers in the back here and angle them to sort of simulate that they're, they're further back. Um, but it depends how important that is to you. All right, so uh, I'll just remove that sweet spot there. And that pretty much completes the, uh, the walkthrough of your home theater room. It 
ticks all the boxes and uh, unless I've missed something in your instructions or misunderstood something and please let me know if that's the case um, we can then um, uh, complete this and uh, make any tweaks and adjustments and uh, that's your design there and then we can uh, if you choose move to the next stage look forward to chatting with you and um, thanks very much uh, once again for using home theater engineering